Hello, everyone. Good morning, Catalyst. Um, I'm glad you guys are here on our virtual setting. Did anyone, is anyone early risers like get up at 4 a.m. like Marvin? Or are we all <laughs> rolling out of bed? <laughs> Um, well, my name is Jessica Philbrin, and I am a staff member here at City Ministry Network. And I just want to welcome you all here for our monthly Catalyst gathering. Um, we convene the community and our area leaders and influencers. Um, so we're excited um, to share this morning's topic. But for those of you joining us on Facebook Live, we want to welcome you to um, please please chat and interact with us. Um, we see it and we, we chat back. So love your feedback there. So um, if you could um, uh, share the screen, there we go. Um, just a few quick things before we get started. Please um, make sure you mute your audio. That keeps us distraction free. And feel free to use the chat function. Like I said, we love to hear your feedback. And then also um, today's meeting, I do wanna remind you will be recorded and added to our website um, and social media. So just so you're aware um, of that. So um, yes, feedback please. Um, also, we wanna encourage you to go to City Ministry Network's page, um, follow us, like us, share our posts and um, this catalyst because it really does help us share our network, um, convene with more than um, others in your network, can see who we are and just um, expand all of our networks. So we appreciate um, your uh, support on that front and let us know you're on catalyst. So um, we appreciate that. So I want to quickly reflect on the purpose of catalyst. So some of you are veterans of Catalyst, have been here for many, many times, many years, and others, this may be a first time, but Catalyst is a place for community connections that matter. Um, so we, what we aim for is a safe place to explore some of the emerging issues that our community faces. And um, we just, we all come from different backgrounds, diverse settings and perspectives. So we all just want to come together and um, benefit our community um, and have that power of um, convening. So um, our hope is that you will connect with others um, who share your vision and your passion and begin to build trust and trusted relationships. At CMN, we're, we're huge about that. And of course, collaborate together to impact our community in, in a greater way. So um, we believe there's magic and, and power in, in connecting. So we appreciate all of you and wanted to reflect on, on CMN's vision for, for Catalyst. So, so um, without further ado, I wanted to introduce today's topic and speakers. So this one's near and dear to my heart. Um, the topic for today is the power of a CDC community Development Corporation. So, um, and who better than Marianne Cannon and Joe Duran, um, just amazing community leaders. So, um, Marianne Cannon is the president and CEO of Stanislaus Community Foundation. Um, I've had the privilege of getting to know her and becoming a friend this past year. Um, she was formerly the vice president of marketing for Community Hospice and um, again, serves as at C Stanislaus Community Foundation CEO. Um, she is the daughter of immigrant parents um, and they moved to Modesto when she was in high school where she graduated from Bayer High School, um, then attended MJC and graduated uh, from UC Davis with a degree in communication studies. Um, she's the mother of two school-aged children. So just, um, loves the community and um, familiar with these issues. Um, and then there's Joe Duran. Um, so he is, um, we, we pretend he's retired, but <laughs> he's really not. Um, he is the CFO of City Ministry Network, um, amazing boss to me, um, the former vice president of Self-Help um, Federal Credit Union and also former president and CEO of Community Trust Credit Union. 
um, moved to Oakdale as a kindergartner um, where he learned to speak English. Um, he is the father of three daughters, um, six grandkids, and of course, many of, uh, uh, to many of us, um, friends and family. So without further ado, um, here are our speakers, Marianne Cannon and Joe Duran. Hi, how's everybody doing this morning? This is, uh, this is really amazing to have such a esteemed group. Um, hang on just a second. I'm gonna just get us here. Cool. Um, so it really is uh, very difficult in some ways to talk about this particular subject because even though there's a lot of nuances to it and, and in, in many ways it's a, a mechanism where we can really do what we talked about earlier today about having community. Um, this is really more about my life and, um, and many other people's lives in our community that really can't have come from a background of, of poverty and have come from a perspective of, of not being able to participate in, in what we would call you know, the dream, right? So um, as, as Marianne and myself talk today, I think, I think it's important that the perspective is, is that, that the heart of all of this is, can we do something that can really be a game changer and or uh, you know, uh, something that has um, long-term effects for our community? You know, we have a shot at it. I believe that in our community today, based especially on the types of relationships that we're all developing and have developed and that the trust that has been built here, which is something that we cannot ever take, you know, discount in any way, shape or form. I, I do believe that there's an opportunity to provide services and resources to those individuals in our community that don't have access to them. So keep that in mind as we kind of go through this. Um, this is, we don't have a lot of time, so we can't share a whole lot about uh, this particular project, but I think we can give you a taste of it and go from there. So um, let's go ahead and start here. So one of the things is that we started a new CDC and uh, you can see this, the initial name that we've decided to go ahead and, and name it. And so uh, what we're gonna do here, and first I wanna kind of take a look at the left side of this slide here, because this is, I think this embodies exactly what we're talking about uh, from um, the, uh, the guru, the Maharasha, uh, Marvin Jacobo, the, the wise one who said, <laughs> with this opportunity, our intent is to break the cycle of generational poverty, particularly in our most vulnerable, vulnerable families. So that's, that's the context of where I really want us to really concentrate on there. And then uh, this outline here, I'm gonna have Marianne, who is just, again, just phenomenal in regard to being such a, a leader that embodies what we're talking about here, uh, share about how we got here. And then I'll, I'll uh, share a bit about a CDC and why City Ministry Network has uh, gotten involved with that. So Marianne. Thanks, Joe. So good to be with all of you this morning. Uh, you're some of I when I came on, I saw some of my favorite people, and I want to start actually with a quote that I read recently that I think embodies not just this group, but um, what this work that we're endeavoring to do together, why it matters, and and what it takes. And so there's this quote from Adam Grant. He says, "The world is full of leaders with strong opinions and weak values." What if we strive for the opposite, strong values and weak opinions? Integrity depends on being consistent in your principles. Progress depends on being flexible in your policies. And so I think that's very much the approach Stanislaus Community Foundation a year and a half ago took, maybe even two years now, when we began to explore what are the conditions that create poverty? Why are people stuck in poverty? And what are the conditions that we might create together to alleviate poverty and bring people from the very margins of our economy into the center? And so that was, let's say, our larger question that was guiding our, our exploration. And so that's what we began to do. We partnered with a group of 
of consultants that are economists that, that understand some of these conditions. And we looked at data. We talked to a lot of people, especially in South and West Modesto. And you can imagine that both the data, which I'll share with you in a minute, and the, the, the conversations we had were really compelling. We also talked to economic development practitioners, sort of people that do this as in their day jobs uh, every day, and, and business leaders, folks like Joe and Marvin and many, many others. Um, and we, we wanted to understand what are the barriers that keep people from moving up the ladder. Um, and again, as Joe said, it's a deeply personal um, question for me too and endeavor because, you know, we're not sort of the face of um, traditional success. You know, I'm an immigrant. I wasn't born in this country. I know Joe is the son of immigrants that um, a lot of us are. And so, but we also know what's possible and um, what has not become possible, both in this country and this community. So this exploration I wanna mention also began pre-COVID, but I think everything we've seen with COVID has really just further underscored what we already knew to be true with this work that the Community Foundation began to, to understand. So what did we begin to understand as a result of the data dives and the conversations and the exploration? Um, at, at, right before COVID, uh, we began to put together this data and understand that there's actually in a community like Stanislaus and, and Modesto, and I, I hate to say this, but surprise, surprise, you guys, here's the headline. We live in a disinvested community. We live in a community that's missing basic infrastructure. And by, by that, I mean organizational infrastructure to support financial mobility. That doesn't mean anyone's doing their job wrong. It means that there's more is needed, more supports to pull people out of poverty. And guess what? People have the ability and the wherewithal to also pull themselves out of poverty, but they do need some support. And there needs to be an ecosystem in a thriving, vibrant community that starts to create pathways to prosperity for more people, upskilling, job training, educational pathways, home ownership, car ownership, safe neighborhoods, access to healthy food. I mean, there's just so much. But when you begin to build this ecosystem, these, these families and in the entire community thrives. So we also landed in this place where we understood that we needed a nonprofit locally that really could have the trust with the community, but also access to power, because you need both, to be honest with you, to really form a new type of organization, which is called a community development corporation. So next slide, please. I'll share with you some of the data. So here it is that we began. These were sort of the headline data. We had a lot more and I'm, you're well, anyone that wants to see the report, actually it's on our website and maybe after the call today, we could make it available. But we did publish a report as COVID was, was breaking, um, but, but to sort of um, not just culminate all of this research and data, but also develop a two-year work plan for the community foundation. And in terms of committing to all of you in the community, here's the role we're gonna play. In, in building economic prosperity. But first, this is the data that was really headlining uh, to us, you guys. Only one out of 10 of the most recruited four jobs in Stanislaus County pays a living wage job. It's a registered nurse. So that's what the one out of the most recruited four jobs that actually is able to support one adult and one child at $26 an hour. That was really interesting to us. We need more quality jobs and we need an abundance of them. And by quality jobs, I mean living wage jobs that sustain a family of four at minimum. Also, another really compelling data point for us was two thirds of the people practically that, that live at the federal poverty line aren't sitting at home. They're working full time. And that was really shocking to us. <laughs> so we have legions of the working poor in our community. And we do need higher wage jobs and also upskilling and training programs that place people in those jobs. And then you can imagine that these disparities are even more um, widened in households of color. So you could see that data there, that households of color tend to be twice as likely to live in poverty, to not own their homes and very close to that razor's edge uh, margin. I will tell you, you guys, too, what was as COVID again underscored all of this, because we, we knew this to be true as data points, but to see in 2020 America people lined up for food within just even a month of COVID happening was, if it didn't shock you, it, it should have. Certainly for me, it was such a visible indicator of what's really happening in people's lives. And again, no judgment, just it is what it is. Um, so next slide, please. And so um, 
the other thing we began to understand is this ecosystem that I mentioned earlier. We need, um, in a disinvested community, multiple things need to happen. In a vibrant e community, there's multiple ladders to economic success. You could see that ecosystem. And by the way, each of those little uh, hexagon shapes we mapped. But, but people tend to think of economic development as something like, you know, the economic development practitioners do or something that's like just business. No, you, in order to have a thriving economic development system, you need business retention and attract, uh, attraction, certainly, but community needs to be marketed, you need research and development, you need to be, you have access to capital, you know, better, better paying jobs, stronger training programs, there's, there's a whole host and beneath each of these hexagons, there's like 10 more hexagons, you guys, like there's a lot that goes into a thriving economy, but that also needs to be interplaying with the community development piece. Do we have people participating in our workforce? How are we supporting our youth so that they can stay here and have good paying jobs and access to training? So you can see that community development, economic development, and then this idea of planning and placemaking, that we have affordable homes, that the community is part of a larger vision, that we have quality of life and safe neighborhoods and good roadways and, and sidewalks. And so all of these things have to work in concert with each other. But what we tend to do is shift economic development to sort of something someone else does. Community development sort of is the nonprofit space. And then you've got planning and placemaking kind of happens, kind of, again, just specific group of people. What we began to understand is these things need to work in concert with each other. And we also began to understand that the, there, we have some great nonprofits, you guys, in our community, but there isn't one nonprofit dedicated to financial mobility. We have a lot of social service organizations that came out of sort of the county contracts or other types of funding and their fundraising, homeless shelters, mental health services, basic needs, hospice, performing arts, youth, all amazing organizations. We didn't, and some of them do financial mobility, you know, maybe financial literacy or financial training or a little bit of job training with MJC and others, but they're not necessarily their core mission is financial mobility. And we began to understand that we desperately needed that. We also didn't have business incubators and accelerators and access to you know, financial capital for businesses. We began to see that really when COVID happened that the Latino led businesses were largely unable to access the CARES Act funding um, in a seamless way and had those uneven relationships with banking institutions to access payroll protection dollars. Um, and that that all leads to these pathways that are very hard to, to achieve for home and business ownership for low to moderate income folks. So out of all of this, the Community Foundation uh, really began to, as part of our two-year work plan, again, I think Jessica just linked it to the report to it. Um, we helped, we went to City Ministry Network. They were already down this path with Joe and Marvin and their board and really um, asked them, if, if you're interested in becoming a community development corporation, we have some funding from our resilient status loss fund that we stood up during COVID supported by multiple donors to at least start you on your path. And, and, they, and, and Joe's gonna talk about all of that, that they basically city ministry network with some you know, financial support from the community foundation began a planning process to become, to birth a new type of organization which is a community development corporation. We're also working with two different local banking institutions to transition to become community development financial institutions. Those two things, a CDC and a CDFI, are so necessary as part of this ecosystem to begin to move the tide towards greater financial prosperity for more people. So that's that's where we are today. I'll turn it back to Joe. Okay, thanks, Marianne. That really, um, really set the stage up. Uh, a couple more facts here, and in particular, we, you know, one of the things that we've landed on is our housing crisis, as many of you know. Um, Stanislaus County is home to over 550,000 residents. And, um, you know, so we're, we've got a fairly large group of people here. And it, but according to the 217 U.S. Census, 86,000 or 15.6% .6 residents live in poverty. That's 20% above the statewide rate, by the way. So we are in so many ways so far behind so many others. Uh, and then <clears throat> real telling is poverty rates in South and West Modesto are nearly 30% with rates for Hispanic residents at 31 and 54 for, for black residents. Just let that settle for a second. It's almost like a tale of two cities in many ways. And it's something that I, I think that we, we really need to um, 
really keep in the forefront of, of, of really advancing our community to the place that we really want it to be. Um, trying to move my screen around because it keeps blocking things here. So uh, Stanislaus County has experienced dramatic, obviously COVID-19. In February, 2020, our unemployment rate, rate was at 6.6. .6. And listen to this, this figure rose to as much as 17.5 by April. We've really been impacted. Unemployment currently hovers around 15%. We've always nationally been way up there, right? And it's, it's, there's a lot of categories that we as a community lead. Um, and one which I found to be really surprising is we're number either one or two in the country in regard to commute time, in regard to individuals that go to work. Uh, so that's just, a, just kind of a factor in and of itself. So as Marianne said, um, we, we went through the, the, um, the consultants and what we found from the consultants as a third party coming outside from our community, outside of our community, taking a look at the lens is there was really a need for a community development corporation. And in a second, I'm gonna to talk to you about what a community development corporation is. Um, and out of, and a community development corporation can do many, many different things, but the three things that are the two things that they determined to be the highest priorities here in this community was small business development. So micro enterprise really come alongside those individuals that are there, you know, at the beginning or have the potential of really launching uh, businesses. And the second one is affordable uh, home ownership. And let me tell you why that's personal to me. And, and uh, I hesitated to share this because I shared it so many times, but for some of those of you that haven't, my, my own personal journey, as Marianne mentioned, I, uh, we moved to California and when I was five years old um, and my mother primarily moved here because she was, she had come from a very abusive relationship with my father. Um, and so there was kind of uh, this thing of trying to escape. So we moved to the land of opportunity here in California to specifically to Oakdale uh, mainly because uh, she had some uh, family members that are working at, at Hunts at the cannery. So in hopes of being able to work at the cannery, she, we moved there. And so our very first day living with, with my uh, uncles there, um, we noticed, and my mom noticed that there's a house across the street that was being condemned. And it was a small house, probably about 600 square feet um, and just often didn't really look good. And somehow my mom, um, with in her broken English, made her way, and I don't know how she did to this day. I, when I think about this, it just astounds me. Made her way down to the city hall, and found out who the owner of that of the dilapidated, um, you know, home was, and had the courage and the strength to act, go over to that house, knock on the door, and ask them if she could buy that house from them. And the the individual. He said, yeah, and, and so they sold, my mom gave him, I think it was $500 down and bought the house for $2,000 and made $100 monthly payments. And, and so, but what happened was we became homeowners. So it was, it was the single most revolutionary thing that could have ever happened to me and, and to my family at that point, because we belonged you know, we were no longer gonna be moving from place to place to place, but our roots literally went down and we saw ourselves as being worthy of being in the community and, and just the whole change that happened within us, the dynamics was just so incredibly powerful. So that began to lead a track for us moving forward. And I began to, at a very, very, very young age, understand why home ownership is so important. And, um, yeah, I, I sometimes wonder what had happened. And by the way, my mom loved pink. And so we cleaned it all up and we painted the house pink. Um, so uh, as a five-year-old, it's like, oh my gosh, a pink house, but it was a house. So it was awesome. Um, so one of the things, uh, what is a CDC? So basically a CDC is, is a nonprofit. And the bottom line of, of a community development corporation is it's embedded into the local community that it wants to serve. And it really is primary focus is how do we bring, begin to have access to capital, access to opportunities that we can bring into that particular local community. 
And so many of the most successful community development corporations, you know, um, work in development of affordable housing. They do a lot of community services such as education, job training, healthcare, and uh, other social programs. So a mature community of a development corporation, if it's been in this community for any, uh, for, a long, you know, let's say seven to 10 years in particular, you should see some tremendous impact that happens as a result of that being there. And so <clears throat> what I'm going to do is show you just a quick one minute and 30 second video of a community that started a CDC and what it looks like. And as you look at this, think of our communities, envision South and West Modesto as well as other communities in our county and um, begin to dream and think of what we can do if we collaborate and, um, and deliver. All right, <laughs> uh, think of, again, Crow's Landing Road, uh, you know, West Modesto. Um, if we were able to bring the resources, again, access to capital and the um, uh, development part of being able to really reach into our community in such a way that we're able to empower and, and build a bridge for individuals to, to be able to participate in these types of uh, activities. Uh, it's, it's totally possible. It's absolutely possible. I've seen it happen in my career uh, of 36 years working at the credit union where, where I retired from, Self-Help Federal Credit Union. Um, we grew from about uh, $50 million in deposits, uh, about 11,000 members to over $1.3 billion in, in deposits and over 350 um, uh, employees and ended up with branches in 36 different communities. Many of those communities, just like our community and other communities like that. And I saw firsthand the power of a community development corporation working with a CDFI, which I'll describe in a moment. Um, Self-help, who where I retired from, was the largest community development finance institution in the country. And, um, and by really utilizing, I think, a lot of the um, uh, learnings and a lot of the experiences that I've had and others that our, our team have had, I, I think we have the ability to be able to try to attempt to pull something like that out. Um, so what we're going to be doing as CMN is, is really founding a brand new organization called the Community Development Corporation. Um, and one of the quick wins that we've had is that we was worked with the housing authority um, and it was in November, right at late November where we got a call from them and they said something to the effect that they had two homes that they needed to get out to individuals with low to moderate income. And the problem with that is the houses 
had been built and the cost in was about $300,000. Well, try to find uh, a family of four that makes under $50,000 or $55,000 a year and get them to qualify for a mortgage loan is impossible. So access to capital, when we talk about that, that's kind of what that means. And in the short story, we were able to find two families and we were able to uh, get one of our local credit unions, which this is, is again, this is kind of gives you the sense of working with a CDFI or a financial institution or credit union working as a CDC in the middle. We were able to get that credit union to fund uh, two loans for $290,000 each and a 2.5% interest rate over 40 years. And so what happened was the, the monthly payment on those houses was uh, $1,300, 1320 I believe, a month, where they were living in very, very small quarters as renters, right? And uh, paying $1,300 a month, and all of a sudden we're able to move into a new home that uh, was, in essence, in many ways, is their new home, is, is home ownership. And to have the two young uh, daughters really show me around, um, it brought tears to my eyes. It's just, again, it was just this power of, there was never a dream that they would be ever be able to own um, something like that. And so that's kind of uh, one of our early wins of really kind of beginning to uh, uh, pilot some of the different programs that we would be doing through, this, doing through the CDC. Um, <clears throat> another opportunity that we're looking at is we are, in talking to the, the county and the city, um, we've determined that there's a lot of different uh, properties or excess land that is owned by a lot of churches in our community. And so we are right now in the process of, of, of um, piloting a program where we're gonna be able to put some housing on some of these church properties. And uh, we've got two projects right now, one in, in Modesto, one on Crowsland, actually three, one in Crows Landing Road, and we're looking for one in Riverbank where the idea is that excess land that is on the churches would be able to be used to create uh, what we would call tiny home villages. And so this is something that we've been working on uh, probably for about a year and a half or so, and actually have the plans working very closely with the county and the cities uh, to basically make that happen. Uh, so that's, I don't wanna get, dig deep into that, but that's, that's again, a kind of an idea, a breath of some of the stuff, some of the uh, ideas and some of the projects that we're gonna be working on. Um, so our initial core initiatives are pathway towards home ownership and then also micro enterprise. And you can see to the left there that that's the house that I'm talking about. That's one of the two houses that we were able to facilitate already and get individuals that you know, weren't even thinking about having the ability to become homeowners, become homeowners. And again, when you talk, look, you look at home ownership, it's, act, it's access to loans, it's access to, uh, uh, you know, um, you need to have access to funding. And by basically working with the lenders and then working with the community and then working with the builders, coming up with some kind of a program that allows that particular unit, once it's built to be affordable, to individuals of, of lower economic means is huge. It's a game changer. Um, we have literally thousands and thousands of individuals that are out there that um, don't have access to capital. And one of the things that the Community Development Corporation is able to do working, as Marianne mentioned, with a community development financial institution, which is in many instances a credit union, is to find niche programs and products that would allow individuals like that to qualify for the types of loans that would, would, would be able to put them in a position to be uh, become homeowners. And um, again, you know, in my history in working with self-help, um, I could tell you that we were doing roughly probably 200 million uh, a year uh, on, on housing in, in this particular sector. And the whole purpose being trying to create a pathway for individuals so that they can get home ownership. And part of that is being able to identify projects that you can participate in so you can build them and then, then the projects and the homes are sold only to those individuals at a certain poverty level. And then you begin to integrate them systematically into that. Um, I'm gonna go really fast here now. 
Um, so again, the whole idea of partnering with, with the different financial institutions and um, providing technical assistance and walking them through the whole process, which includes financial literacy, uh, which includes, um, you know, getting individuals understanding uh, how to save uh, through a community development corporation. We're able to do what's called an IDA with uh, with the, the credit unions, where an individual, for example, would let's say save one dollar, put them in a, into a savings account, and we can get between uh, matching dollars one to three, depending on who we're able to get, to help fund us, so that one dollar turns into three dollars, or that thousand dollars turns into three thousand dollars those kinds of things to help. And the beauty of the Community Development Corporation and the Community Development Financial Institution is they have access to funding outside of our area. That is, that's the game changer. Um, one of the ways we were able to grow uh, self-help federal credit union was through an initial grant that we received from the Ford Foundation and that was $33 million, $30 million of which went to basically our capacity for deposits and the other 3 million, which was unrestricted to start. And every year um, I was involved in really trying to um, find partners throughout the country that would invest in what we were doing to give us the ability to charge lower interest rates on the products. So individuals of, um, that needed uh, lower qualification standards were able to apply for and be able to afford different types of products. And so one of the things that we anticipate is the relationship with a lot of those outside funders so that we're able to attract more money into our community that has, that has been bypassed in many ways. If you take a look at other communities like Fresno in particular and, and, um, and others throughout the country, Modesto has been bypassed by a lot of the philanthropy and funding that's available out there. And because of the designation of being a community development corporation or a community development financial institution, it allows us to really be in the ball, ball game in order to try to track those kinds of, uh, of funding opportunities. So we were gonna be, we're gonna be providing services to underserved communities by consulting, by bringing them access to capital, meaning, um, one of the big issues that I worked on extensively was the whole payday lending industry and how many people in our community are captured, captured by the payday lending industry. So be able to go out to the communities and say, look, you don't need to be paying as much as you're paying. Why don't we introduce you to a local uh, credit union or you know, traditional banking institution that can take care of your needs? And, and then in another sense, being part of the Community Development Corporation, there's a, a need for more financial institutions in some of our communities that are, uh, that, that are here. As many of you know, West Modesto no longer has a banking institution right now. Bank of America left there. So one of the goals that we would have as Community Development Corporation is to, to get a financial institution to actually open up in West Modesto within the next couple of years and as, as well as other communities. So individuals in those communities that the, that the traditional banking institutions are kind of leaving are being, uh, you, we're developing and bringing back into that, those communities, sensible financial institutions that can take care of those particular needs. And this is the difference I think um, that makes it, makes it, uh, um, you know, the potential there is to, be able to deliver. This is something that we will live and breathe. You know, I go to bed at night. I think about, I dream about this stuff. Uh, my team, our team, this is, this is not something, one of the things we do, this is what we do. Um, this is a calling, it's an assignment. And so it's, it's not just a, you know, one of, uh, like I said, one of the projects that we have going on. Our, goal is to embed ourselves into the community and to listen to the community and ask them what their needs are and for us to serve as an intermediary or that convener in there so that we can do everything we can to bring the resources into that particular community which should, which should include helping other nonprofits do better at what they're doing and at the end really trying to give individuals in those communities the opportunity to really scale up and move up into different uh, sectors. Um, 
I know I'm running out of time. And so a lot of this other stuff, um, for those of you that are, gonna, are interested, I would like for you to uh, um, you know, send me an email or connect with me. I'd really like to go over this with you. But a CDFI, why is a CDFI so important? Community Development Financial Institution is an institution that's primary focus is in the underserved areas of their community. It's a financial institution. And it was started back in 19, let's see, 1994, 1995. And every year the US Treasury puts money into the Community Development Financial Institution Fund that, that, that community development financial institutions can apply for. And it's usually around you know, 20 million, and let's see, I'm sorry, about $80 million. This year, through the Stimulus Act, there has been placed, I believe, somewhere in the range of eight to ten billion billion dollars that have gone into the CDFI. And that money is designated to go into underserved communities to basically help the, those financial institutions really bring in products and bring in <clears throat> opportunities to bring give people access to capital. So that's one of the reasons that the CDFIs are so important. And we are fortunate here locally that we have two credit unions. One is Valley First Federal Credit Union, as well as Rolling F, which is Foster Farms Credit Union out of Turlock, that are both uh, on the pathway of becoming CDFIs. Jessica and myself have been working with them. Um, we predict, <laughs> we hope that by April that they will have the CDFI designation. We've helped them uh, in the area of applying for technical assistance at uh, between 100 and 200 thousand dollars, just just for the assistance side, and then we are going to collaborate with with other projects and other, <clears throat> you know, sector leaders in our community to apply for significant dollars to come into our community, so that the reality of actually pulling up a brand new financial institution in in West Modesto is is very much a reality if we are able to strategically and passionately work towards that. Um, that's what I just mentioned there. We've got that going on. Um, and finally, I'm just going to go ahead and close with this, the power of hope. <clears throat> you know, in our, one of our recent uh, uh, meetings, uh, staff meetings, we talked about this. We talked about hope. We talked about how important hope is. And in our communities that we serve, that's one thing that there is a tremendous amount of is hope. Um, but at the, end, at the same time, understanding that how hard it is. And so this quote here, is, it says, God provides a safe place for us. And I love these words, it says, he surrounds us with love and peace and strengthens us when the world is just too hard. We go to him when we are afraid and broken and he, I love the word, shelters us. He doesn't remove us from the situation, but helps us get through it. And that's, in, in my opinion, where we stand today. We have a shot, like I said at the beginning of, of uh, when we begin to share here, that's very unique. This, this community here is developed something very, very special. And that is trust, trusting relationships. You know, living here for 60 years and watching things happen, I can tell you, I, this is the most optimistic I've ever been in my lifetime to see the absolute possibility of seeing what we talked about earlier about community and the absolute possibility of us being able to, through trusted relationships, actually do the heavy lift that systemically will change our community in a way that um, we are hoping for and believing this will happen. So um, I'm gonna close with that. Thanks, Joe and Marianne. Um, wow, it's just, I agree. I resonate with just being so excited for this community about the opportunities that we're, we're seeing and that many of you are involved in as well. So um, on our off time, I'm just gonna really encourage you guys to think about what you've heard today and something that strikes you or encourage, encourages you um, and just you know, reach out to Joe or Marianne um, and any of us here at City Ministry Network if, if you wanna just talk more about that. Um, 
but really excited for our community. Now we're gonna turn it over to Marvin Jacobo, our CEO for some closing thoughts and announcements. Uh, Marianne, Joe, thank you. You two are amazing. And it's fun to see in our community how people are amazing in their own ways, in their own unique ways. And it's gonna take all of us to continue to pull ourselves up into the future and break the cycle of generational poverty in our community. And just like you in 2020 City Mission Network, we were publicly doing all we could to meet immediate needs and meet the needs that were screaming at people. And on the other hand, we were quietly, along with the Stanislaus Community Foundation and others, probably some of you in this room, we were quietly beginning to shape the future and beginning to discover how can we reshape ourselves, rebirth ourselves uh, for the new world. And it is a new world. And uh, if you're one of those that are nostalgic and are, can't wait to get back to the way it used to be, well, let me know how that goes. Um, I'd like to see that happen. But on the other hand, my sense is we've got to continue to be innovative. For us, 2021 is, is going to be innovative. We're going to begin looking at new ways and new models, new ideas, fresh ideas, uh, because the old answers just aren't working, weren't working for us and aren't working for us. We are looking for best practices from around the country and the best thinkers and uh, challenging us here in Stanislaus County to continue to uh, be the best we can be for the sake of every family. So our intent is to break the cycle of generational poverty in Stanislaus County. And it fits right into City Ministry Network's mission statement because we do, we first are motivated by God's love. We do what we do in the name of Jesus. We think that the church, the people of God should be doing, um, should be right in the middle of this work, right where people are and where they see their best needs or their most of their needs and their, their most desperate needs. Uh, we do exist to um, advocate for our most vulnerable communities. And you saw the statistics there, our vulnerable communities are large. And those of us with resources, whether it's wisdom, uh, people, relationships, money, we all need to be in this together to elevate our families that are most vulnerable. And I, I do wanna to say to you, there is a place for philosophy and uh, deeper thinking. I, boy, we need to have that to do our best thinking. On the other hand, when people are needy, I wanna encourage us to stop the talking and let's get to work. Let's take care of them as we're also on the side, trying to figure out how to do the best we can going forward in the future. I'm not sure if I said that correctly and somebody might argue with that and that's fine. I just know that I get weary of having conversations around philosophy while people are struggling. So, uh, hey, there I am right there. Let's get to work and let's also keep talking. I don't always know how to do that. So you help me as we move forward helping people. So we want to continue to connect all of you together. It's going to take all of us, just like today with Marianne and Joe, Community Foundation, City Ministry Network. I've been looking at the participants in this list. It's going to take all of us. Let's continue to align our efforts. Let's continue to galvanize our work. Uh, if there's distrust between us, please sit down with whoever that might be and let's work out those differences. We are deeply in get embedded in three neighborhoods in our community and the territorialism um, has reflected itself in numerous different ways. Wonderful people in these neighborhoods, wonderful organizations, wonderful things they're doing, and yet there's this sense of territorialism. So I just want us to continue to work together. We've got to figure this out together so that Stanislaus County can continue to be uh, characterized by that word uh, collaboration. And then finally, our intent and our hope is that every family in our community are gonna flourish. We've gotta do this together. And with the Community Development Corporation developing, with the Community Development uh, Financial Institutions developing together, we have a real good shot at breaking this cycle of generational poverty. City Ministry Network and the uh, Stanislaus um, equity partnerships will work together. We'll work side by side. We are still figuring out the governmental structure of it. They will be two separate boards. And yet the importance of having the DNA of City Ministry Network in embedded in the CDC will continue to, to be developed and, and work on that. So we're after it. We're going after it and looking forward to seeing what will happen over this next year. So I do want to thank you for being here with us. I want to mention a couple of things to you. Listen, I want to encourage you, if there's something that you can share from what you learned today, would you do that? Uh, something that uh, you can just mention to a friend at the office or at work or in their neighborhood and just let them know there's some incredible things happening in our community to do the deeper work that needs to happen. 
you know, through the Community Development Corporation and everything else that's happening. Also too, we are about relationships. We are about connecting people. We are now today in the red tier. Please continue to wear your masks and, and continue to be wise. Continue to be wise, please. So I wanna encourage you, if you can have some coffee with somebody or a Zoom and just share with them the future of what's happening and how they might get involved. And I do wanna ask you, uh, again, we shared with you what our story has been, but I wanna again, thank you for all your work. And as I look at the list of participants in the room this morning, all of you are doing amazing work and continue to do that. If you need some encouragement, uh, if you need some support, man, please just let somebody know, reach some out, reach out to somebody. Um, we're bumping into people regularly. They've just been beaten up uh, figuratively over this last year, discouraged, disheartened, struggling, and definitely will need a friend. We are a City Minister Network is a 501c3 organization. So I wanna encourage you, please, if if uh, the Lord so wills to partner with us financially as we continue to do our work alongside you and with others. We're in that season, just like everybody else, where we are um, asking for financial support. Our golf tournament, which we had scheduled for May, we discovered we need to bump it all the way back to September. So I just wanna let you know, I know all of you are so excited about being out in the sunshine with us, uh, but we'll give you more information about that. That'll be September 20th next month. One of the things we're going to be looking at, which I am really excited about um, in one sense, is the creative approaches that uh, community business leaders have used to help their employees when it comes to mental health and resilience. You know, this has been a rough year on a lot of people. Depression, uh, disillusionment, disheartenment, discouragement, all those kind of things. And there have been some, some of you business owners out there that have done a terrific job in helping their, your employees uh, stay healthy mentally. And so we're going to have a panel of business owners sharing their stories of how they've done it and how we want to move forward. We are going to be coming out of this season here in the next six, six months or so, and we're going to be needing to work together around the mental health and the health and well-being of all of our neighbors. We'll be back in person. Here's the thing we want to talk with you about. We'll be back in person next month. And we also will be on Zoom. So we will do a hybrid online experience. We will be back if you are comfortable at Cross Point Church. We'll be meeting in the pavilion. COVID safe, safe of course. Uh, we'll have extra masks for you. If you forget one, forget to bring a mask, we're going to have them for you. We'll be spread out through the room in safety and we will start the process of, of uh, coming back live. If you're not comfortable, like my wife is not comfortable coming back live, we will have the uh, Zoom hybrid experience as well. So you can also share in Catalyst from, uh, from Zoom. So we'll give you more information here in the coming weeks. But I wanna thank you for being a part with us. It's an exciting time. Uh, it's been a hard time, but I'm so proud of our county and the men and women that are here which includes all of you, because it, we are so resilient and we're gonna come back stronger than when we started. And that was a commitment I made and some of us made, I remember on March 16th of last year, we're gonna come out of this stronger. And that was a commitment that we made together as some friends and it's come to fruition. So you have a good morning. Thank you so much. And any questions you might have, uh, put it in the chat, Joe, Marianne or others can, uh, we'll get back to you, okay? Or just mail them, email them directly because they're your friends. You have a good morning. Thank you so much. See you soon.